Welcome to Les Schwab Tire Center's Outdoor GPS, presented by Fisherman's Marine and Outdoor. Good morning, everyone. I'm Owen Hayes. You're watching Les Schwab Tire Center's Outdoor GPS, presented to you by Fisherman's Marine and Outdoor. Make sure you head over there. They've got multiple sales going on, as they always do. Go take advantage of that. Uh, this morning, we got a busy show lined up, but we want to get your phone calls in. We had a little bit of an issue. Uh, with our phone lines, that's all worked out. So for folks that might have, it's live TV, everyone. If you watch the show long, you know. Uh, we want to hear from you. It's the Terra Firma hotline. It's right down here, 503-548-6777. Questions, comments, reports, okay? Anyone that might have a live report, you go to the front of the line. So don't be shy. Uh, again, we'd love to hear from you. And we can do that here, being the only live interactive fishing and hunting television show that's ever existed. So by all means, jump in. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, lots of things that we're going to cover today. Before we get to our main interview, uh, as always, we're going to show you some photos. Not yet, though. We've got photos that all of you have been sending in uh, and videos. So don't be shy with that. We're going to show you how to do it uh, in just a little bit. Uh, we're going to have my field report. I giggle because I was on a soccer field, or uh, I'm an American. So we call it a soccer field, but it's not a soccer pitch, right? Pitch, anyone? I believe that's correct. Uh, watching my daughter play her last soccer game yesterday. Uh, so, and they won, by the way. It went undefeated. Congratulations, girls. Um, but I did get some reports that I can share out there, and hopefully they might give you an idea or two what you can do uh, this upcoming week. We will check in with Katie Sneeg and find out what that weather is really going to be like. Uh, I don't believe it changed too much since yesterday. Uh, but it's going to get clear, stay clear, and maybe have some rain coming up, hopefully more than what she might be forecasting. Special guest in studio, uh, Alex Maslov from Edge Rods. Uh, you can see him there holding up a beautiful uh, tiger. I know where that was caught, too, I think. Probably, yeah, maybe, maybe. Uh, but what a beautiful fish. Uh, Alex is, uh, of course, with Edge. We're going to talk about steelhead rods. It's November, okay? By the next time we are back here on Saturday, it's gonna be like, what, the th third or fourth of November, so I'm calling it November already. Uh, we've got winter steelhead on our doorstep. We're gonna talk about arguably, maybe not even arguably, the best rods manufactured anywhere. Um, I know Alex would say that. And I've been fishing edge rods for many, many years prior to them becoming a sponsor or partner here at Outdoor GPS. I've never had a chance to talk about edge rods when you're talking about steelhead rods. It's all because of timing, right? When they first became part of Outdoor GPS here shortly ago, we were talking salmon rods. Now, steelhead. And you know how important different types of rods are for different ways to go after steelhead. We've got uh, countless ways to target steelhead now. From bobbers, yes, to throwing spinners and spoons, drift fishing, uh, done correctly, twitching for crying out loud. Uh, there's so many different ways to go after steelhead and so many different types of rods, bait cast, spinning rods, 10, 6, 11, 4s, uh, 9, 2s, 9 foots. Why? Right? All these different versions. And uh, quite honestly, we're also going to show you their, can I, can I call it a flagship? Flagship rod right here. Um, I'm sure that you're all well aware of the Black Widow version. Uh, of the edge rods when you're talking about steelhead and, and salmon rods that they have available. This is called the silver, correct? Silver um, widow. And you're going to go, well, why, right? Where is that silver coming from? The story behind this and the technology and just a very brief explanation from Alex is, it's amazing. It, it, I, think, I think it's underappreciated. Would you agree? And Alex is off, off air, forgive me, um, but the technology that's in here, it's underappreciated. I mean, we're going to get to this. Uh, can you call this the most advanced kind of setup? And speak up when you say it. Can you, can you call this one of the most advanced rods available? Today, yes. It's a U.S. military tech and a fishing rod. Listen, I realize that a lot of you go, oh, edge rods are so expensive. I'm going to tell you right now, there's a reason why. And they're really not even that expensive. There are rods that are out there that are more expensive with half the technology. That's a fact. But we're going to show you very, very nice stuff here. Okay, we're going to give you a reason why. You might want to look into it. And we're also going to explain to you why if 
since we're going into the holidays, maybe you know of somebody out there that likes to have the best. Maybe this is something that you can consider for a present or something. Maybe a, a reason to get them a, 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 a gift certificate and send them up to uh, their facility where they can literally can be fitted. His words, be fitted for the perfect edge rod for whatever it is that you're going to be doing. Uh, also, we're going to talk about the two rods that I, the two rod combos that I use 90% of the time when I'm chasing steelhead, winter steelhead, of course, in particular, uh, and a couple of different versions and why you might want to look at different versions, different numbers, right? What does it all mean? How to break that down to make the right decision for the rod that's going to be right for you. So we're going to cover that with Alex. Uh, it, literally, we could do shows talking about all these different rods and versions. So we're going to try to neck it down <laughs> into three segments, one of which of those segments uh, is going to be the Chevy Silverado Tech Tip of the Week, right? I get this question all the time. How do you separate stuck rods? And anybody could stick a rod. It doesn't matter if it's a $250, $350, $99 uh, rod. It doesn't matter. They can all get stuck. It all depends on what you do, right? How it was when you stuck it together or put it together. It turns out my answer that I've been given for 16, nearly 16 years here on Outdoor GPS <laughs> might not be the right one. So if you're one of those folks that have used my advice on that, which has worked for me in the past, maybe there's a better way to do it. We'll talk with Alex about that. That will be your tech tip uh, that you can utilize. Uh, then, of course, we've got some time broken down for some of your phone calls, so don't be shy with that. Looks like we've got one that's coming in now. Uh, we've got Seth uh, on the line, uh, and it looks like he's from Lebanon. Can we take a call, uh, Brian? Seth, it looks like you're from Lebanon. I say this all the time. You probably knew that already, uh, but it looks like you got a question about uh, the uh, chronic wasting disease. What's going on? Yeah, man. Hey, good morning. I was just wondering, um, what is ODFW's next step if they get a positive test result for a CWD in a deer or an elk? It's a great question. It's one of them that I asked him yesterday. I, I, don't, I thought I asked him that on the air, but I may not have. Uh, they, once they get that positive uh, um, test, once they verify that they actually have a case, that, that CD, CWD is actually uh, there, it is going to be full-blown, full-court press, right? They're going to get into that particular area, and y you might see closures. You might see uh, animals removed. Uh, there's a number of different things that they are going to have to do to try to contain it. But one of the scariest parts is, and I don't know if we actually covered this yesterday. Ryan, correct me if I'm wrong. But... It, 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 they spread it constantly, their saliva, their, their urine, if they bled for whatever reason, and it stays there in the ground, they say forever. It needs to be incinerated in order for that particular disease uh, to be eliminated from wherever it is. I mean, it's, it's so really kind of scary. like a controlled burn? Yes, incinerate, like at a temperature of 1,800 degrees or higher. Now, I'm not saying they're going to go out there and burn the whole forest down, right? I'm just saying that that's how scary uh, CWD, cr chronic wasting disease, is. That's how scary uh, this is. But, yes, when they do find that positive, let's just cross their fing our fingers that it doesn't happen, um, that th they will go right into that particular area that the animal was taken, and they will start the process there. Uh, it, it is, it's a bit scary, and a lot of it is going to be, trial by fire okay uh, there's lots of other states that are out there that have had this issue for a long time and they have yet to figure out a way to stop the spread so this is a really i actually got criticized yesterday for being too adamant about this chronic wasting disease which i find laughable at best you know the keyboard tough guy warriors out there like oh you're just you mouthpiece for odfw now listen Ding dong. No, this is, a, this is a situation, this is a disease that can literally wipe out our, our deer and elk populations, moose in Washington and other areas, completely. Let alone, if it didn't wipe it out, it could bring that population down enough where they would close access to all hunting. Rifle, bow hunting, this is not a joke. It's not something that we can overlook as a user group. It's actually very, very scary. As you can tell, I am more scared of this than I am, and I'll be honest here, and I've mentioned it to the ODFW folks and they were here, poor management 
uh, that they have used over the years to get us to the situation that we're in now, not necessarily referring to chronic wasting disease, but you've heard me here for years criticize ODFW, rightly so, on a number of different issues, from big games to waterfowl to fishing, of course, uh, but this is one that we can all agree on is as scary as it gets. I mean, it really... It really, really is. But I, I, again, I don't mean to get sidetracked there, but hopefully that answers your question. Uh, but man, yes, thanks sir. for your phone call. Thanks for watching. Uh, okay, quickly, let's go ahead and show you the photos that you've all been sending in. If you've been sending these in uh, the last week or two, pay attention, might pop up. Here's a beautiful deer. Um, wait a second. That's a flintlock, isn't it? Yeah, it is. That's a black powder. That's an old, I'm, that's the man. You're gonna go after a deer or an elk with an old school flintlock? Hey, I couldn't shoot one of those things open to sights 50 feet, let alone 50 yards if you had to. Jack, great job, beautiful. Eastern Oregon buck with a black uh, black powder rifle, that's awesome. Uh, Mike uh, from Knee Tarts, crabbing has been good all over the place. Hopefully we can get uh, Bill Jr. on here uh, sometime soon and talk about uh, crabbing like we do each year with him. It's that time of year. Mike, thanks for sending him in. Right there, that photo made my wife uh, very hungry. Uh, Mom and Julie uh, with a couple of beautiful uh, Chinook and that gravel bar looks a little familiar. Uh, but great job, great photo. Thanks for sending it in, everyone. We appreciate that. And there's several ways to do it. We'll cover a couple of those when we come back. Here's a moose hunt. This is Bob. Uh, is that a Shire's moose? Is that, or am I saying that right? With that, those small paddles like that? That's, I don't care, still one of the most delicious uh, animals on the planet is a moose. Look at the crew, too, to make that happen. Great photo, Bob. Thanks for sending that in. Uh, here's another good one. Mallard. Oh, abandoned Mallard. Oh, look at that. He's wearing old school USIA. I can say that now. Old school USIA waders. Uh, Kim, if you're out there. Uh, yeah, very, very cool. Pat, thanks for sending it in. I wonder where that one came from. Anyway, here's, here's how you do it. It's easy. The Fox 12 app is the simplest way to do it. Scroll down, find out their GPS. It'll show you how to load up your photos and video, and boom, you're in. And send some video. We'd love to see. I want to see some video from your duck line, right? I hunt public, so I'm not showing my duck line. It's just that simple. Uh, but if you're on private somewhere, or maybe you just don't care where you hunt on public. Matter of fact, do that. Uh, I wouldn't mind. Uh, send those in. We'd love to show you off. All right, we're going to cut to a quick break. When we come back, we're going to have uh, my field report segment. We're going to neck it down a little bit because I want to save some time for Alex from Edge Rods. Don't go anywhere. We've got a lot more outdoor GPS for you in just a couple minutes. 